Sup chooms, so I wanted to do a real quick video today because I know some of you have been asking me about this press announcement from Kintor Pharmaceuticals that appeared about a week ago. The announcement concerns KX826, otherwise known as pyrolutamide, and I'll just go ahead and read it. Quote, Kintor Pharmaceutical Limited announced that after receiving the designation for its in-house developed KX826 from the International Nomenclature Cosmetic Ingredient, the company's cosmetics with KX826 as the main ingredient was officially launched into the international market recently. The first product is the topical anti-hair loss solution for androgenic alopecia. The company will further explore the efficacy of KX826 in the field of androgenic alopecia and acne, actively enrich the product lines, increase market promotion to target users, and meet customer requirements under different usage scenarios. The company is of the view that the launch of the new product will provide a solid stream of revenue and cash flow to the group, benefiting the group as a whole in the long term. KX826 is one of the core innovative products of the group. During the course of its development, it has been used to complete multiple clinical trials for the treatment of male and female androgenic alopecia in China and the United States. It has demonstrated excellent safety profile and remarkable therapeutic effects in anti-hair loss and new hair growth. Dr. Yaoji Tong, the founder, chairman, and CEO of Kintor Pharma said, the launch of the new product is the first commercialization attempt of KX826 in the field of dermatology, representing the group's transition from R&D stage to commercialization stage. Going forward, the company will further commercialize its cosmetics products worldwide, providing more convenient and effective products to consumers with the demand of anti-hair loss and new hair growth. In the future, the group plans to allocate more resources to enhance the group's commercialization capabilities to boost brand awareness, capture market dynamics, and increase the penetration rate of the products." Unquote. So this is interesting. The last time we heard about pyrolutamide was when Kintor was planning to do a trial comparing it to minoxidil, and I did a video about that which I'll link below. However, that was after the disappointing result of the pyrolutamide phase 3 trial, which I also went over in another video. That study enrolled 740 subjects. In the study, even though there was hair growth with pyrolutamide compared to baseline, the amount of hair growth was not statistically significant from the hair regrowth in the control group. So, it looks like what Kintor is doing here is that they have realized that getting FDA or Chinese approval for pyrolutamide as a drug is going to be very difficult for them, or at least is going to take many more years of research studies. It's also possible that it would never get approved if none of the studies turn out to show that it's even effective. So being that they know that their product is probably a disappointment, Kintor is now using a special loophole. By calling pyrolutamide a cosmetic instead of a drug, they can release it now without having to conduct any more clinical trials on their product. Product. All they need to do to get it approved as a cosmetic is prove that it is safe, and apparently they now have enough evidence to show it is safe. So Kintor can put it on the market now as a cosmetic without needing to show any evidence of efficacy so long as it is marketed as a cosmetic and not as a drug. If this story sounds familiar, that is because the drug company called Bioneer did the exact same thing with their product called Cosma RNA. Cosma RNA is a drug that allegedly interferes with the RNA that produces the androgen receptor and despite having a very interesting mechanism of action, to date, there is no good data proving that it actually works. So, just like with Cosma RNA, Kintor has also decided to short-circuit the drug approval process and just get their drug approved as a cosmetic product so they could sell it right now. Unlike with Cosma RNA, though, pyrolutamide has a different mechanism of action. It is an androgen receptor blocker that at first, at least in theory, looked like it was going to be a very powerful treatment for androgenic alopecia. However, what we now know from the clinical trials is that pyrolutamide is not as powerful as we hoped it would be. As a matter of fact, it looks like pretty much all the topical androgen receptor blockers, which include things like Brizula, RU5841, Fluoridol, and now pyrolutamide, have shown disappointing results compared to 5AR inhibiting drugs. I honestly don't know why antiandrogens are so much worse than 5AR inhibitors when it comes to fighting hair loss, although I have speculated that maybe the reason why topical antiandrogens suck compared to 5-air inhibitors is because androgen receptor blockers block both DHT and testosterone instead of just lowering DHT levels. There is some evidence that testosterone may be beneficial for hair growth if it isn't converted into DHT, and I have discussed that in a video that I'll link below, but the idea is, is that by blocking both DHT and testosterone, you don't get as much benefit as just blocking the production of DHT alone. So ideally, you want to have both low DHT levels and high testosterone. Of course, this is just 
speculation, and maybe another simpler explanation would be that these drugs are simply just too weak to compete with 5 air blockers. Anyways, the press release from Kintor implies to me that they've pretty much moved on from pyrolutamide and they've accepted that it is a disappointing treatment. What they need now though more than anything is to raise cash to fund what they hope will be the real breakthrough product in their arsenal, GT20029. That makes a lot more sense to me because GT20029 is a much more promising treatment that has shown far better outcomes to pyrolutamide so far. GT20029 works differently from pyrolutamide because GT20029 is not an androgen receptor blocker. Rather, what it is is an androgen receptor destroyer. So it is probably going to be more powerful and effective than something like pyrolutamide since GT20029 has the potential to wipe out the androgen receptors entirely rather than just competing with DHT. Looking past all the mechanistic data though, we also know that GT20029 has had very good results in phase 2 trials and I'll go ahead and link my GT20029 videos below. So even though pyrolutamide isn't the hair loss treatment we were hoping for, GT20029 still has the potential to be a breakthrough hair loss remedy. So, as far as pyrolutamide is concerned though, I don't think it is completely useless, but this news is still very disappointing, I have to admit. I think by releasing pyrolutamide as a cosmetic rather than a drug, it means that to at least some degree now, Kintor has given up officially on pyrolutamide as being a frontline treatment for androgenic alopecia. If they had actual confidence in their product, then they would continue the clinical trials and release it as a pharmaceutical, not as a cosmetic. I think it might still be useful as an adjunctive treatment when combined with a 5 error blocker and growth stimulant, but I would definitely not consider this an essential compound of any hair loss stack. Still, I don't think all hope is lost just yet for pyrolutamide. I don't know if this decision means that Kintor is going to abandon any further phase 3 trials for pyrolutamide. Like I said earlier, they have just recently started a phase 3 study comparing pyrolutamide with minoxidil, and what I'm really hoping they will do is that they will use a higher concentration of pyrolutamide, such as 1% pyrolutamide in this study, as opposed to the 0.5% concentration that was used in the previous unsuccessful trial. It's certainly possible that a higher concentration of pyrolutamide might be more successful than what has been used so far. We just have to wait and see if they actually do the damn research. But I suspect that the main reason for marketing the drug as a cosmetic is to use the profits to fund their GT20029 research and to fund other products they have in the pipeline that aren't related to hair loss. I mean, Kintor, after all, makes a lot of other non-hair loss related drugs. So overall, I am disappointed by this news, Chums, but I'm still optimistic that GT20029 might be the breakthrough drug that could actually compete with 5 air blockers like finasteride and dutasteride. So I definitely haven't given up hope on GT20029 just yet. But until then, if you want to stop hair loss, then you have only two options at your disposal. You have to choose to be a finasteride peasant or a member of the dutasteride master race. Whichever path you may choose, though, you can rest assured that your hair loss will be under control. So thank you for watching, Hair Loss Switchers. I'll be back with some more preem content soon. God bless.